Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this presentation, we're going to be covering complete periodization for strength training. So we're going to be covering everything from the annual plan down to the sets, reps, and weights for an individual training session. So the first thing we need to understand and probably the most fundamental concept of periodizing strength training is planning the mesocycle. So we need to understand that we have three distinct mesocycle progressions that we can follow. The first one is an accumulation mesocycle. We then have an intensification mesocycle. And finally, we have a realization mesocycle. So the goal of the accumulation mesocycle, as stated in the name, is to accumulate volume. While we're accumulating volume, it's pretty hard to also progress intensity without doing so much training that we're regressing. So in, generally in a, an accumulation mesocycle, we want to increase our volume while maintaining our intensity. And this is going to be best for structural adaptations. So things like hypertrophy and connective tissue adaptations. Also for our work capacity. So it's going to enhance our ability to do more volume in the future. And also for exercise variation. So if we're always doing the same specific exercises, we can use a little bit of variation here so that our training doesn't become monotonous both mentally and physically. However, an accumulation mesocycle is not going to be good for specific strength gains. So we're not going to use this sort of mesocycle if we're trying to peak at a specific time for performance. That leads into the second point, performance. We're not going to be at our strongest at this point. So how this might look in a mesocycle would be something like this. So I've taken just a random exercise, a back squat for this example, and I've written up a four week mesocycle. So three weeks of overload with the fourth week being a deload. So we may start with three sets of six at an arbitrary load of 100 kilos. What we then may do is keep the same reps and the same load and just increase volume by increasing the number of sets. So going from three sets to four sets to five sets. And then in the deload, obviously dropping down the volume in order to reduce fatigue. And that drop in volume is represented here in this graph by the fourth week being lower volume here. Other than that, the first three weeks are an accumulation of volume. Next, we have an intensification mesocycle, which is essentially the opposite to the accumulation mesocycle. So with this form of progression, we're going to increase intensity over time while maintaining our volume. And this is going to be best for basically converting those structural adaptations that we had in the accumulation mesocycle and turning them into strength. So actually making our muscles stronger. It's also going to be good for maintaining our muscle mass, but probably won't give us much muscle hypertrophy. However, the intensification mesocycle is not too good again for realizing our strength to our full potential. Because doing this sort of training, we, we still have moderate volume, so we're not dropping as much fatigue, and the intensities will not quite be high enough to really perform at our peak. So essentially, this is the middle ground. We'll perform quite well in this mesocycle, and we'll have decent structural adaptations, but it's not going to be best for either of those adaptations. So how an intensification mesocycle may look on paper, we have an example here, again, sticking with our back squat and staying with the same theme. We may have here three sets of five at 100 kilos, again arbitrary, but this time we may maintain the volume by maintaining the sets and reps and just focus on increasing the load incrementally over time. So we may start at 100 kilos, then go up to 105 and then 110, and then have a deload by reducing the sets but maintaining the intensity fairly high. And in this graph again, we can see an increase in intensity and then in the last week a decrease to account for the deload and we then have a maintenance of volume. And the last way we can progress our strength training is through a realization mesocycle. So the realization mesocycle is where we're really going to be at our peak performance. So the intensity is going to increase throughout the mesocycle and the volume is going to decrease to allow fatigue to drop off. So we're going to be at our highest intensities with our lowest fatigue level. So this is going to be best for high performance of specific strength. So when we really need to be at our peak performance for strength, this is the type of mesocycle we want to be training in. And that's again, like we mentioned, we're dissipating fatigue by reducing volume, and we're also going to be hitting the highest intensities.
However, a realization mesocycle is very poor for any exercise variation because it's going to be highly specific to the strength training that we're trying to do. It's also not going to be good for structural adaptations or for building strength. It's more going to be capitalizing on all that structural adaptations and the strength potential that were built in the previous blocks. This mesocycle is likely also to have a higher risk of injury because of the high intensities that we're handling. So if our volume is too high with these high intensities, we may have some joint or connective tissue pains that may start to occur. So a realization mesocycle may look something like this on paper. So keeping the same exercise, back squat, this time we may do three sets of four reps at 100 kilos, followed by three sets of three reps at 110, three sets of two reps at 120, and finally one set of one at 130. So as we can see here, the load is increasing throughout the week, and we're actually reducing the amount of reps that we're doing. So this is like an acute form of linear periodization in this training block. The other thing to note about the realization mesocycle is that instead of having a deload in week four, we have a taper. Now the difference between a taper and a deload is that with a taper, we're trying to maximize performance throughout the taper week, whereas a deload, we're just simply trying to reduce fatigue. The reason we have a taper at the end of the realization mesocycle is because at the end of this week, we want to be performing at our absolute best. So now taking a look at the big picture, the annual plan, we now need to determine at what stages of the year, what training we should be doing. So I have two examples here. One is of an individual sport and one is of a team or a seasonal sport. So how do we know what sort of strength training we need to do at what point of the year for each of these sports? So this is a theoretical annual plan I've created for an individual sport. So firstly, taking a look at this row here, this is going to be our competitions. So the difference between an individual sport and a team or a seasonal sport is that there are fewer competitions in an individual sport, and generally at these competitions, we need to be at our peak. So in this annual plan here, we have six total competitions, and the darker the color is indicating that the competition is more important. So this might be an international competition or a national championships, depending on the athlete. And these might be qualifiers for that, for example. This here may be a state level competition, so it's fairly important, but it's not as important as the big one at the end of the year. And these ones here may just be competitions that the athlete can simply train through and does not particularly need to peak for. So we now need to determine at what points of the year we're going to use what sort of strength training. So remembering back to our three mesocycles or training progressions that we can utilize, the accumulation, the intensification, and the realization training mesocycles, we want to strategically plan at the competitions that are more important to be at our best. So at these competitions here, we're going to have our realization training mesocycles. This realization period is longer than this one here, because it's a more important competition and we need to have a bigger peak for performance. Whereas in this phase here, towards the start, we have a longer accumulation period. This is because we don't necessarily need to be at our peak anytime soon and we can start focusing on those structural and work capacity adaptations. These are gonna carry over in the future, eventually when we do need to be at our peak to help that peak be even greater. Whereas if we only do realization periods throughout the entire year, we're not going to get those baseline adaptations and we're probably going to stagnate quite quickly. So essentially we have a large accumulation block, an intensification block and a small realization block. And in the second half of the year, we have a small accumulation period, a moderate intensification period, and then a larger realization period. So now we're going to take a look at how we're going to periodize our strength training for a team sport athlete or a sport that has many competitive games during the year. So again, taking a look at this row here, this is gonna be our matches for whatever sport that this athlete plays. So we may have a few pre-season games here and then a big chunk of competitive in-season games here. Again, the darker the color is gonna indicate the more important the competition or the match. It may be a harder opponent or it may be down the end, a final or a semi-final 
but essentially the main difference between a seasonal or a team sport compared with the individual sport is the long duration of competitions rather than having one or two important competitions in the year. So this becomes a little bit more difficult to periodize for because we don't have a distinct point that we need to be at our peak. Essentially, we need to be in a pretty good condition for a long period of time. So the best that we can do is distribute our accumulation, intensification and realization periods at appropriate times of the year, depending on where we need to be at our best and where we don't really need to be at our best. So let's start here during the off season period where we have no planned training. As soon as we move from the off season into the pre-season after the season is already finished, that's probably the best time with no competitive matches to start with some accumulation strength work. As the pre-season gets closer and closer to the season, we probably still want to be in an accumulation phase because we still don't have many competitive games that are important. We may just have some pre-season friendly matches. As we have more important competitions throughout the year, or certain chunks of important competitions, we may then want to start introducing our intensification or our realization periods. However, we want to make sure that we don't have too much of the in-season period with these high intensity blocks because that's going to potentially cause us to start losing some of that work capacity and the muscle hypertrophy that we're after. So during this period here, put an intensification period because there are a few important games. Maybe this is a hard opposition that we're expecting and there's also a few fairly difficult games around there. So this is probably a period that we want to be performing fairly well. We then may go back into an accumulation period until we get towards the end of the season when we have some of the most important matches for the entire season. So this could be semi-finals and finals towards the end of the season or qualifiers for those finals. So this is where we really want to save our high intensity realization periods so that we're really performing at our best. So after this accumulation period, I've transitioned into a short intensification period followed by a short realization period which should mean that we're really at our peak when it counts. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.